filled with strong glass. Our dried voices when we whisper together are quiet and meaningless with wind and dry grass. The rats feed. Oh, he's out there. He's really out there. Shape without form. Shape without color. Paralyzed force. Very simple dialectics, one through nine. No maybes, no supposes, no fractions. You can't travel in space, you can't go out into space, you know, without like, you know, uh, with fractions. What are you gonna land on, one quarter, three eighths? What are you gonna do when you go from here to Venus or something? That's dialectic physics, okay? Dialectic logic is, there's only love and hate. You either love somebody or you hate them. What?
grandmother. I wanted to tear my teeth out. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I want to remember it. I never want to forget it. I never want to forget. And then I realized, like I was shot, like I was shot with a diamond, a diamond bullet right through my forehead. And I thought, my God, the genius of that, the genius, the will to do that. Perfect, genuine, complete, crystalline, pure. And then I realized that they were stronger than me because they could stand it. These were not monsters. These were men, trained cadres. These men who fought with their hearts, who have families, who have children, who are filled with love. But they had the strength, the strength to do that. If I had ten divisions, of those men, then our troubles here would be over very quickly. You have to have men who are moral and at the same time who are able to utilize their primordial instincts to kill without feeling, without passion. without judgment. Because it's judgment that defeats us. I told them, you don't know how much your mother has suffered. In those days, I cried and cried until I had no more tears. I gave birth to eight children, and I cried eight times. At night, I found half my pillow wet. But who cared about me? Who'd even cook me a bowl of hot gruel? When I had my second son, my first baby was lying there, crying all the time. I was crying day and night. I couldn't take it anymore. I thought, why should I have another? I had a hard enough time with only one, so I smothered the new baby. I pressed the quilt over him. He was very strong and struggled. I thought he was dead, but after an hour he groaned. Blood came out of his mouth and soaked the quilt before he died. Then I buried him. I killed my own baby. I had nothing to eat myself, and the other baby was crying. How could I possibly stand one more? I had to kill my own baby. Wasn't there someone in the village who could help you? Who'd come and take care of me? If anyone came, my old man would say I was a slut. No one dared come near this place. Did he ever treat me like a human being? Never. In all the years I've been here, I've never depended on him for a thing, I'm telling you. He never gave me anything. I waited on him all the time, and he said, I paid good money for you. Shouldn't you wait on me? Well, it kills me to wait on him. Now I'm old and I've brought up my children. I only live for my sons. That's all over with. Things are fine now. Of course things are fine now. But when my sons give me grief, I just can't stand it. Oh, don't get too upset. The way they talk, well, they're your own children. My own children. Pretty awful. Their father has bullied me all my life. Now that I'm in the hands of my children, I still have to take this. If I ran around outside all day like some women, then I might put up with this. But I never went anywhere, not even to the village store. And I still have to listen to this. Now things are the way they ought to be. Ever since Ling Chao married into the family, I've been liberated. Whenever an opera is playing, I go. I've really come up in the world. I feel like I'm in paradise. But what does my old man say? You've gotten so uppity, you don't know your place anymore. <laughs>